Hello everyone, my name is Neptune, and unfortunately we had ran into a huge technical difficulties and we need to call our backup streamer to be able to fix this up here. But no, the set count here is still 3-2 for WVU. They were able to pause their game, so definitely we have a little bit more time and flexibility here. But please stay tuned, we, this set has been amazing so far, and let me make sure you guys know, I still have a co-host here. Introduce yourself. It's me again. I'm spicy. I'm really. This has been an absolutely amazing set, as Neptune has mentioned before. This set's been so intense that the internet just can't handle it, and that's why we're once again live bring with Division Six Finals of CCA. Yeah, definitely here. It's gonna be Tower Control Inkblot Art Academy here for Game uh, Six. Uh, yeah, I, I am. I am fascinated to see how these two teams play on this set. Yeah, they mentioned it before. I think they said this was up until the stream died. It was a close match, so and it's been a close back and forth between both these teams. It's an absolute heavyweight fight so far. Yeah. WVU is in the lead so far, three to two. But Wetcott Empire could definitely respond with another win of their own, and even the set up three to three potentially. Yeah, definitely. Uh, certainly, we had the, the, the uh, what was it? College is wrong there. I apologize, folks. Uh, we are still suffering from technical difficulties because this game has just been too explosive for the stream to be able to handle here. Uh, WVU, West Coast Virginia University in the lead lead of the 3-2 uh, with Wetcott Empire falling, falling shortly behind at Sunny Polytech Institute here. So let's, uh, let's work this out here and continue on with these amazing games here, Spicy. Let's see what these two teams bring to the table. Yeah, if you're just tuning in for the first time and haven't been able to catch up the set earlier, we saw there's a lot of weapon variety from the side of both teams so far. WVU having to having a lot of depth, especially in the Splatland class. I'm interested to see they typically bring out a Nautilus. There's a Nautilus again, and they're bringing the Trislosher Nouveau and the ZF Scope. And while we got Black Cod Empire, you see to bring out the Splat Charger, Rapid Pro Deco, Slosher Machine, and the Trislosher again. Yeah, definitely. Okay, wow. Okay, Rabbit Blaster Deco is coming back online here as the two teams are already going to be fighting in mid here. It is going to be a bloodbath here, Spicy. What do you, else do you expect to see? I'm expecting an absolute duel from the Chargers right now. As you see from West Virginia, they're, the Chargers got to move up to tower now. Going to go off really quickly there as the Sleet of Slosher really trying to make some plays there too as well. The flank coming out on the right side there and you see them trying to make some picks. Not able to land it right there so far, but it looks like they're going to be able to get that past pressure. The first oh my goodness. I saw that Charger got overwhelmed there just slowly but surely. Not only just one member dropped in starting to throw up bombs, the sloshing machine able to put so much pressure out here and the Booyah Bomb going to come out and they're going for this first checkpoint here. Yeah, that Booyah Bomb's going to add some pressure and you see the Rapid Pro has, oh, and it's a nice two down situation right there. Rapid Pro also has an inkjet ready in case for they want, they want to pop it. W West Wetcott Empire is about, could potentially take the lead here as the tower does reset though. Yeah, definitely. It doesn't matter too much here because look at how much control and space Wetcott Empire has here. Look at that platform. It is a death sentence to anyone who tries to fight this sloshing machine, especially when they have a Booyah Bomb here just taking armor, all the shots that are coming in here. They're going to try and see if they can stop that tri slosher from going anywhere, and he goes down here. That tower is riding up to the second checkpoint already. The, the amount of momentum that w uh, Wetcott Empire has is insane. And we know from er, seeing it earlier, Wetcott Empire thrives when they can get momentum, especially if they're going to be able to figure out a way to keep it. It's just whether or not they're going to be able to keep that momentum. We saw them snowball earlier in the set, and now, right now, with West Virginia just trying to find some plays right here as the tower goes back to neutral, it's going to be interesting to see what what plays happen now. Ooh, okay. A little bit of a bad loss there with the deco going down here, but uh, no, the sloshing machine is still going to be strong. Never mind! The charger just takes them out anyways! And they get to be able to stand on tower here for a good while and regain map control. That, I think, is maybe the fourth or fifth wipe so far in this set right now. As Look at this! Is going to Look find at more this! Right there. The bubble's Three. going to come up. Another wipe! WVU is on a steamroll right now, and it looks like they're going to be able to take the lead. Yeah, back-to-back -back wipeouts here as this charger remains strong on this, and Wetcott Empire is struggling to get in. They don't have pain control, and the slosh machine is trying to be able to get some picks, but no, just barely able to hop up on tower to be able to hopefully salvage this moment here. It's only two minutes and 30 seconds into the game here and what count empire needs to be able to find an answer back in here as the junior tried to get back up there they're still in the spawn being able to cause some havoc here 
I appreciate that play, that attempted play from West Virginia with that junior trying to steal the tower back within their own base right there. But despite that, WVU is going to put Wet Caught Empire in a two-down situation once again. Three-down situation now as WVU is going to take the tower once again. And now two minutes to go right now. WVU feels like they're going to have a lot of momentum. What is the response going to be from Wet Caught Empire? Yeah, the Wet Cod Empire is definitely has to try and find these picks here and try and push them out of their spawn here because a lot of the pick control is currently in WVU's favor as they currently, as you see, they have just the Nautilus and Charger just set up and ready to move around and push down anyone who just drops down on up without thinking twice. Yup, exactly. Now the Nautilus now from the side of Wet Cod, of Wet West Virginia finding a pick there. The bubble now is up on the tower there, and now it's going to be interesting to see what's going to be the plays here. Now West Virginia, they have a lot of control so far, with less than a minute and a half to go. How much farther are they going to push this tower before eventually they eventually have to give it up? Yeah, definitely. The, <laughs> the, the tower is not being kind to Wet Cod Empire here, as it just kind of gets pushed up into positions that they're not able to keep be able to uh, regain map control here. As you notice, the tower is just kind of swinging back, back and forth here, like a pendulum here, as it just goes back to mid here. It's going to go up here if uh, Wet Cod Empire here just does not find a way to regain map control and get those picks here, especially with that charger on the platform there. Yes, and having that charge on the platform from WVU especially. You saw it to the chicken train right there. But despite that, Wet Cod Empire is going to go two down, and WVU is going to have the tower once again with about 30 seconds to go. Yeah. If you're Wet Cod Empire, you are got to be panicking right now. You have to find a solution back in and be able to get a push here. Especially with drinks online, the specials can be kept. This is going to be really aggressive here. Unless the sloshing machine here is able to do the plays it wants to do. Currently gets one. The Booyah Bomb is able to block the Slap Bomb and is able to regain control of this platform here. Let's see if this sloshing machine is able to make a miracle happen. That could be, we need a miracle indeed right now. Wet Cod Empire has the tower and it looks in the five second mark to go. It looks like, oh, there's a bubble coming out now from West Virginia. Ooh. It's WVU with no! Wet Cod Empire, they fall off the tower and because of that, West Virginia is now, I'm pretty sure, on championship point now. Yeah, right now, as you guys don't, if you guys didn't know, Grand Finals is a best of nine, not a best of seven here. So WVU is currently at set point here, and they're looking to lock it out before uh, Wet Cod Empire is able to have any more responses left and be able to take home the gold medal in their division. Yep, yep. We saw in this game, it's just been a, it's basically been telling the entire set so far. It's been heavy punch after heavy punch. Just you see, when one team strikes, another team just strikes right back with those tower pushes right there. WVU making the most out of that their own counter push really, and being able and from that counter push, they didn't have they could just play defense. And you saw throughout time and time again, W West Virginia's defense is really held strong. Oh my gosh, like I blinked and I noticed like Wet Cod Empire was already on the aggression there and taking advantage of that platform. That sloshing machine definitely showing why they love the sloshing machine. Able to get those crucial picks and just fling ink in directions to just discourage people and just get those picks that are so crucial for making those plays there. But uh, you know what? We have another game here, folks, with Rainmaker Hagglefish Market. This is game number seven, folks, and if Wet Cod Empire is not able to retaliate with the W itself, WVU will be taking the gold here. But uh, what would you do if you're in Wet Cod Empire's shoes right now? Will you try and change things up? Will you try and stick to the same old game plan? Will you take, use the same game plan but play it differently, perhaps slower or faster for that fact? But uh, you know what? It all comes down to Hagglefish Market here, and I'm not sure how I feel about this map. What about you, Spicy? I have mixed feelings about this map personally. I love it when I am holding the Rainmaker and I can take the skip, but honestly, this is a defensive nightmare sometimes, especially like when it's what well, after that first checkpoint breaks. Like honestly, oh, the yeah. amount of like, skips, the amount of pushes that could be had here, it could be this could be an incredibly volatile game, and especially with these two teams in particular, when they're both able to really make strong pushes here. I'm this is horrifying here. This might be a very offensive game so far compared to what we've been normally yep. seeing. I like to boil down a lot of these plays from both these teams to be called aggressive outbursts, right? Sometimes the aggression is so hard that it just swings the momentum in their favor, right? And then from there, the other team is able to play defense, and unless they get another aggressive burst put on them, they're just able to stall it out and keep the lead. 
it's from what I've been noticing these last couple of games here. But uh, you know what? Wet Cod Empire, they're not in here to lose. They're here to win. So they got to be able to roar in this last game here or they're potentially is e either set runs going to be over here. Yep, and that's and that will be the end of their season too. The end of this incredible Cinderella run for Wetcott Empire. Going losing their first two matches of the season, winning their last three in the last two weeks of the regular season and then pulling off the upset in the semis. Wetcott Empire season is on the line right now as we go into this game Rainmaker on Hagglefish. Yeah, definitely. I, I I'm going to notice that WVU has found a really comfortable um how do I say it? Just build around the Charger as well as the Nautilus here. Just being able to just pressure from a distance here and punish the shorter range stuff on their team. And that's going to be a bit of a problem here, Wetcott Empire, as they have three shooters that are all short range. Yeah, I think it's really interesting that you bring that up because it feels like WVU's entire like game plan is kind of built around this Nautilus here, their captain, Splat Cat. So have, being able to like really put some pressure on, but as we say, that Wetcott Empire is going to force WVU in a three-round situation, and it looks like yep. they're going to be able to get to that first checkpoint. Yeah, the Waybreaker already popped there, right? And it's already looking like a steamroll as that thing is near popping. The Tri-Strikes are coming out here, and they have a lot of room to work with. And they missed the jump, though! Oh, no! <gasps> yeah, even if they got the jump, the Triple Strikes were probably going to stop them before it could really do anything right here. But this, that's a massive defensive hold right there from the side of West Virginia, being able to prevent them from taking the skip, because if they were able to get that skip, we know how many points that's going to be. And right now, it's going to be really crucial for WVU to hold on defense here or let the Rainmaker reset before Wetcott Empire gets another chance. Yeah, definitely. You can see uh, Wetcott Empire is not letting up on the pressure here. They're holding the paint control here as, uh, what was it? WVU is just looking for an opportunity to get back in here, especially with that Rainmaker pop. It is not doing them any favors here, but no, they're able to take down their Hydra here as, and see if the short line shooters are getting a little bit pressured by the Nautilus here with the rain coming out. There's some just amazing awareness from the side of the Nautilus there, consistently calling out a flank before the flank could even happen now. And West Virginia is going to put WCOT Empire in a two-down situation now, as it looks like they're going to be able to try to make a push of their own here, or they're kind of getting stalled out in mid, though. As it's, and, and the triple strike's coming out right now. Is yeah. West Virginia going to be able to really make a push of their own here before having to give it up on their own? Ooh, no, they're going to get stuck that was actually, right there. That was a pretty good trade, not going to lie, because it keeps the Rainmaker out right now and gives the Hydra time to reposition to be able to put pressure in mid. This is a real, that was a really good play from Wet and Cod Empire. That T-Tech threw away their life for the team. That is what we call a team player there, folks. And as you see right now, the Booyah Bomb's coming out and spicy, a wipeout happened! Oh my god, and the wipe, and there's the skip we've been saying. Is this gonna be game? Oh no! Gonna get all the way to the 10, right? They're gonna get wipe out game. back to back here. They were telling you with their own wipeout, as WVU is just currently struggling to get in, having to be uh, this huge uphill battle with 10 points remaining here. They gotta likely knock it out here to be able to able to compete. <laughs> exactly, but. But right now, you've been seeing these counter punches from both sides right there. Yeah, I get wiped, then you get wiped. And right now, despite the massive lead so far from the side of Wetcott Empire right now, WVU's got to off the push on their left side right there. They're not going to have to try to figure out something out on their own right there, but they're yeah. going to go two down in the process. Yeah, the Hydra needs to reload here. It's running low on Hank here. Uh, but as you see, it's in its natural habitat here on the tent here and just able to hold down so many spades and lock down any flanks or attempts as they try to go on the right side there. Yeah, and now we can see, you just see this Hydra putting on so much pressure right now. Having the Booyah Bomb now popping from there for the side of Wetcott Empire. It's getting really difficult for West Virginia to really do anything. As the other, as we keep, keep finding these picks right now, Wetcott Empire is really in their element putting Wet WVU in a three down situation right now with a minute and a half yep. to go. <laughs> the jump is missed again, but it doesn't really matter when you have lead and this much pressure. The Rainmaker is able to paint so much here, and it's not going to be able to allow people in. But no, you don't need to get in if you're a charger. You just need a good line of sight. Exactly, that's all you're going to need now. But right now, if you're the side of West Virginia, you got to make something happen. You haven't scored any points yet so far in this in this game. Right now, the triple strikes aren't going to be coming out now, but it's like right now, they don't have the Rainmaker. They need to do something right now. It's a minute to go right now. It's a minute on the board, and they were not able to push it past mid at any capacity here. So, Wetcott Empire looking right and dandy to take this game number seven here. But, uh, no. 
It seems like the Booyah Bomb's gonna be popped here and try and allow an entryway, but no. Nothing seems to be going through the stronghold of the Hydra and specials that are being tossed out consistently by these short-range shooters. This might be the time for West Virginia to make something happen here with the Hydra down. West Virginia is going to be able to pick up the Rainmaker here. They're going to look to just push up through mid right now. They did put West Cod in a two-down situation briefly, and it looks like they're going to be able to rush to that first checkpoint there. They are going to be able to, but they're going to have to make something big happen here going down, especially as they go two down right now. It looks like West Cod Empire might be able to just hold. Look at this T-Tech here, just pushing him back here. Even though they might not be able to win some of these fights here, they are pushing him back, keeping him occupied, making him look at them instead of the, of the Rainmaker. As you see, they just are happily able to hold this and have the game end here. Ooh, that Charger almost got him there. That would have been devastating, but uh, you know what? Wetcott Empire showing why they made it to Grand Finals and making the score 4-3. Oh, we are still in an amazing set so far. Coming into this match, West Virginia has only lost three games total the entire season. And now in grand finals, in the championship, they have lost three games. Wetcott Empire putting up over about half of their losses so far now against West Virginia. This is an incredible grand finals we are witnessing right now. And I would not be surprised to see if Wetcott Empire wins this next game and pushes us to a deciding game nine. Yeah, I got to give my uh, props to the Tenetech splatter shot there, right? You notice, like, sometimes they go in and they take the trades that they know would benefit their team the most. They'll take down the Rainmaker, right? Just so the Hydra has time to reposition and take out a Droll mid. So even when they get Rainmaker back, well, you have to deal with the Hydra now, right? And they were always just making the their uh, most critical players for getting in, look at them, right? Aggro is an important role in this game, and being able to have the enemy's attention and not die was what the Tanatech Splatter Shot was doing really well there. I believe that was WC, what caught an Empire Spartan, being able to just show in so much of their work here with the Tanatech Splatter Shot and their prowess and being able to allow their team to be able to win. Yup, I'm interested to see if we see some of that gameplay come out once again now. Now we're going into Clam Blitz on Scorch Gorge in this game 8. From earlier in this set, Clam Blitz was one heck of a match right there. When it's an amazing, a really strong push from Wetcut Empire. And then West Virginia, in their counter push, took it all the way to the 1. And that's all they needed to do right there. We might be in for some more explosive games yeah. here. But right now, it's going to be really interesting as we go into the set. Yeah, we have Clam with Scorch Gorge here. Uh, I have my own opinions that are just correct about Scorch Gorge. It's a bad map here, but <laughs> you know what? Clam Blitz makes it a little bit more reasonable here, in my opinion, right? There's some options to be able to push in and definitely going to boil down to who gets map control in the center there. But uh, I just got to admit something and commend both these teams here for just how much of a show they're putting on tonight here. WVU defending their nearly flawless title here as Wetcott Empire is looking to be the underdog in this scenario and shift around the entire <laughs> Division 6 uh, results on its head. The stat team's going to be scratching their head after this one if it does <laughs> go to Game 9 here, but before that, it has to be going through Game 8 here. Clam Blitz, Scorch Gorge, Spicy, let's it go for it. Yup, you see a similar comp come out from the side of West Virginia, and now you see Wet Cod respond there, having their own Nautilus of their own instead of the Hydra right here. I'm interested to see what these weapons bring out here. You see Spartan now, have, you saw the T-Tech play early in last game. I want to see that same thing happen with the Ninja Squid, the Stealth Jump. We gotta be able to see as both teams just fight, go into neutral right now, trying to find some clams, find some picks right now before making a big push. Yeah, I like the Dually Squelchers pick here because it allows them to put pressure at range and be about more mobile than the Charger here. While the Charger's does have good lines of sight, right? And able to put a lot of pressure. The Dually Squelch is a great pick here, especially the Wave Breaker if it gets positioned correctly. But no, it's just a bloodbath in mid here as clams are being thrown around here, hoping that uh, they can form a power clam here. Probably just a little bit scatterbrained and realizing the pressure is on for w Wet Cod Empire here to be able to make a play here as it goes to game number eight. As the craziness continues here with this push. <laughs> Oh my gosh, and the potential for a push right here is massive right now, but they're, they're, 
WVU's defense once again just showing what they can do to stop them from being able to do anything. You see the Dewey Squelcher in the back now. They're going to look to try to get a pick here. Not able to get so far. But they have the Power Clam ready. And But meanwhile, from the side of West Virginia, you see that they have 10 clams, 11 clams now. Are they going to be able to make something happen on their own? It's an absolute big fight in neutral right now before any team's really able to do anything. Yeah, look at the Dewey Squelcher there supporting their, te their uh, junior teammate. Just almost in a losing fight against the Tri-Slosher to be able to take that into a win with the additional damage from both sides. But what was that splat bomb? Oh my goodness. <laughs> what an amazing flap up right there oh my gosh and now the bubble's gonna come out now for the side of west virginia right here we're a minute and a half in so far neither team is able to make a big push so far but you see wet cut empire i think having Ooh. two power clamps but they're gonna go two down now yeah but hey you know what they lost their way breaker here and it's all gonna come down to junior on defense here as Etcot empire is struggling to come up with a defense as the chargers perched up in mid it's all gonna come down to how many picks they can get up here it looks like they have an opportunity to score here spicy and there's a dangerous number of clams on the side of West Virginia, too. So if a push does happen, you could be seeing a very explosive amount of points coming out from the side of West Virginia. Yep. But despite that, it's back. We're once again back to a, almost a neutral position right now as both these teams are struggling to make anything come, make anything out of these splits. But you see some picks now from the side of the Charger in West Virginia yep. here doing what they can do here. Yeah, this Charger is just content to always fall back here and give super jumps and support to their teammates here. Gotta commend Doc here on the Charger, just being able to hold and command so much space here. But hey, you know what? Their teammates are struggling to get in here because of the specials that are being tossed out. Having two wave breakers and being able to slow down both not only even Nautilus, but also the tri Slaughter as well as the Junior is huge on this team. Yes, exactly. Good point. The Wavebreaker does come out now, but they do go down right now. Yep, as right West there. Virginia has got to put them in a two-down situation right now. What is going to be the option here? There's two minutes to go in this game. Neither team has scored. It's been super close so far. It's been an absolute intense yep. neutral right now, but it doesn't look like any team's going to be able to break the barrier. Yep. This is very different from the Clan Blitz game we saw in Museum here. Remember in Museum, it was just offensive burst after offensive burst here until Wet Cut Empire just eventually faltered in the defense department. But uh, you know what? Right now, it looks like they're just at a huge stalemate here. We might get the special overtime clause here for Clan Blitz. Oh, and if we get to the special overtime clause, it would be really interesting if we do have that happen here because both these teams have been able to pick up a number of clans, but I think West Virginia, now West Virginia puts Wet Cod into a three-down situation right here. Yep. This could be the start of something it's right now. It's not the another, three down. Game. It's two down. Is, this Nautilus is going on a rampage and makes out of a bubbler here, ready to score it and just break this stalemate here. And they get not one, two power clans and bring it down to 60 points. But no, this tri is just going to bake it a little bit more here and just pad that lead out here oh my goodness the end in a game that's had as much of a stalemate as we've had so far that lead feels like a lot especially as wet Cut empire needs to start building some clams right there they found the pity and they have one but is they going to be able to do what they need to do to make this happen there are 45 seconds left on the clock right now potentially 40 yeah. seconds left in cca division six yep the other one, unless Wet Caught Empire finds a way to retaliate, WVU will be your Div 6 champions here. But, uh, oh my goodness, it is crazy here how these teams have just been able to contest mid here. I think it's because of the point sensors here that they're very hesitant to push up here. They're always being marked here, and this Charger is being able to command so much space. It is not looking good for Wet Caught Empire. Yup, and with 10 seconds to go right now, it looks like West Virginia is going to be able to do what they need to do to just hold on defense here, but especially as it doesn't look like Black has any power clamps, and that is going to be it! West Virginia, with the dominant season, ends with as the Division 6 CCA champion! Oh my gosh, what a set, ladies and gentlemen. We have just witnessed history here. WVU is your grand finals champion for Division 6 here as they take it the home 5-3. But let's not forget to commend the other team, Wetcott Empire, for completely giving them um, a run for their money and nearly tearing it out into a huge stalemate here on Game 8 Clan Blitz Scorch Gorge. But, uh, oh my goodness, I am, I am stunned. I am lost for words here, Spicy. What has happened?
West Virginia just shows why they without why they deserve to be here. Why they were so dominant throughout the season, not dropping a set in the regular season, not sweeping the semifinals here. They were pushed with their back against the wall here in finals. But you see West Virginia, a team that's been had a, a lot of like roster substitutions throughout this entire set. Every player has had their role. Every player has really shown why they deserve to be on this team. And this is a flat out amazing team effort and a very well deserved championship for West Virginia. Yeah, definitely here. Uh, I'm not sure if they're going to be able to play uh, game number nine here. Uh... What was it here? I'm just like I'm trying. I'm trying to check the uh, information here. Uh, going through the papers here, guys. Definitely looking at paper, not a Discord chat. But uh, we have game number nine confirmed for these two teams. And man, you know what? That is a oh. great CCA tradition. I I gotta lie, one of my favorites here. Regardless of the set results, they are definitely gonna be able to go in out here on game number nine. It might be a clown game. It might be a serious game. Regardless, it's gonna be ending out on a really fun note here. And I'm glad this be to be here to be able to witness all these exactly. players put in all this effort. Yep, this is just a great way to cap off this season for CCA Division 6. Having, like, just an, being able to have this, like, play all nine, being able to play the final game here. Both these teams showed off what they can do in actual competition, showing off it's an amazing best of nine set. But yeah, the best CCA tradition is being able to play all the games if both teams want to. So. Even if this is a clown game and we have some really crazy comps coming in, I'm excited to see just some more Splatoon. Yeah, definitely. But uh, let's not just thank the players here. We got to thank the amazing CCA staff for organizing all of this. Our stats team being able to put in all these numbers and just allowing everything just run as smoothly as it is. And let's not forget the viewers. The viewers here being able to witness such amazing games and allow the scene to grow and give it recognition, right? And give comments and feedback to all these pl wonderful plays being made by everyone it is beautiful to be in the cca a, a division especially when we have more games coming up right after this one but uh stick around folks we have quite the <laughs> games ahead here with division one but before that we have game number nine here the friendly face off here with wet cod empire versus wvu on splat zone wahoo world of all things yeah, I'm excited to see what we have coming in from both these teams. We saw that each of these teams has a lot of weapon variety. I don't know what exactly to see here. I don't know if we're going to see some crazy secret, secret comps. Some like comps that are like, oh, we mean to try this, but now this is the chance to do so. Right now, especially Splat Zones on Wahoo World, I, it could be a really anything going into this. Yeah, I, I, I was speaking in a little bit of our uh, secret information channel, which is just seriously just uh, not, 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 not public, clearly not public. But uh, you know what? There is some words and news here that we might be having a snipe off here. Maybe let's see how this goes out here. But uh, you know what? I'm interested to see the clock is ticking here as Wet Cod Empire is wondering what they're going to be doing here. Whether it's a serious time or a fun time, we are in for a show. Oh my gosh, if it's a snipe off, I don't know if I'm going to be able to maintain my voice as we just see constant picks after picks. I won't feel like I'm commentating Splatoon and instead I'll be commentating like Counter-Strike or Call of Duty, which would be a very interesting thing going into this. I mean, but it's, it'd called, be, oh, be it's called Wet Cod Empire for a reason here, Spicy. Oh no, oh, <laughs> oh no. no, you have a point. Oh my god, what are we going to see going into this? Okay, quick, 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 focus on Funny Squid Game, focus on Funny Squid Game. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, Splat Zones, Wahoo World, Spatanas! I and Splatana's on both sides here. Oh, is it hammer time or Splatana time here, Spicy? What oh is my going God. on? Splatana time. I was not expecting a Splatana time. And it looks like they're all running the same comp too. So this could be really interesting right now as both these teams are just trying to have a sword fight now, I guess, in mid right now. And you just see some blade beams just firing off right now. One team is just going to be happy. Yeah. Both these are trying to fight it off in the center right here. And I think that's going to be WVU in the pink trying to potentially cap the zone here no one can play zone here funny enough here it is a huge stale but one of the things we talk about wipers they like to unga bunga horizontal slash here and that is exactly what gives what caught empire the zone here oh my goodness <laughs> <laughs> 
As you see, Wetcon Empire is gonna have the zone now, and it looks like they're gonna just start to push up. And you see them trying to charge up some slashes, and it looks like, oh, there's an Ultra Stamp ready. I'm scared to see what this is gonna do here. As it seems, seems like really they, they, to counter that. there might have been a gentleman to not use Ultra Stamp here, just the, hor just the horizontal and vertical slashes here. But the torpedoes are still fair game here. You, they brought torpedoes to a sword fight. I don't know what type of rule set they're playing on here, but you can't bring a hammer. All right. I don't understand what's going on. Dude, the guy just chucked it. Yeah, he just chucked it, man. He doesn't need it. What is going on here? People are just throwing out these sword slashes like it's a Zelda game. I don't know what is going on here, folks. I was going to say, Tears of the Kingdom is coming out in a few weeks right now. And I'm, it's really interesting as WVU does have control of the zone now. And you're see, what are we going to have? Oh, hello, Zap, playing Animal Crossing New Horizons. And we're going <laughs> to see both these teams just try to, like, keep it going right now. I'm just going to use my sword to attack these torpedoes is basically yep. what I'm seeing. It is currently a stalemate here in the zones here. The torpedo here is a great painter as he notices it's able to take majority of the zone here. If it's able to connect here, his torpedo are going to be the main painting tool to be able to secure the zone as Wet God Empire currently holds the lead with 25 points remaining along with some penalty. Yep. You know, we both have a history and background in Super Smash Brothers, and I'm looking at four weapons that are basically just sword fighters at this point. So <laughs> as right now, Wet God Empire is going to push up on neutral, maybe go for like a ledge trap or something, I guess, here. And I would just keep up the advantage. Yo, I love, I love, the, I love the, uh, I love, I love them playing footsies over here with those, these vertical beams. Yeah, that is definitely, that is what's happening here. And definitely they do have melee abilities, but man, why get up close when you can just zone with your sword right here? Exactly. They're just look, look at this amazing spacing right now from the side of Wet God Empire. It looks like they're <laughs> going to be able to win this game out of whatever game Super Smash Splatoon, I guess. Super Wet Smash God Empire Splatoon. Wins. <laughs> Wet God Empire won Super Smash Splatoon game number nine here, folks. Put this down in the history books, man. This is quite the game here of experience. Not only have there been swords, they have been bombs. This has definitely been Splatoon 3. Yup, yeah, amazing showing, both in the best of nine championship and in this amazing way, game nine from both teams. That was an absolutely amazing set to watch, both from the competitive aspect and from just the fun play all nine. Yeah, definitely. Oh, man, that was a roller coaster of emotions here. Not only in that end game, but uh, the entire set, I see. I almost lost my voice just screaming from excitement and just being impressed by all these different plays here. But, uh, Spicy, where can the wonderful, wonderful people of Twitch.tv find you? You can find me on Twitter at 2SpicyBM or YouTube at SpicyBM. You can also catch me at Low Tide City where I'll be commentating next month. Oh boy, you hear that, guys? Spicy is going to be at Low Tide City. One of the biggest Splatoon locals, I believe, that is currently going to be happening soon here. But uh, if you guys are curious where you can find me, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Neptune. Instead of the TU, you have a 2 in there and an underscore at the end. I'm on Twitch, I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube. You can find me on those social media platforms. But uh, yeah, stick around, folks. We do have another game coming up, up here with Division 1 playoffs here we have semi-finals and finals happening on the same night here so stick around here but uh yeah stick around folks and come back later we are currently going to be sending you over to dabble productions here and we're gonna be getting in some amazing games here going forward